when I have uh, patients come into our trauma center, uh, of course, uh, I get angry because, you know, I have people like 19-year-olds that come in that are shot 20, 30 times. And despite our best efforts, there's only so much we can do. When you're a doctor and you see the toll that bullets are taking on human bodies all the time, um, it, it is striking. People were sharing gun violence stories. We saw people actually posting uh, pictures of what rooms or what their clothes may look like after um, you know, taking care of gunshot wound victims. When that got out into the public sphere, it really, I think, was a view that, frankly, the public hadn't seen before. Because for the first time, they were seeing what it's like when a surgeon finishes a case and is drenched in blood. I think it's completely unacceptable for any one individual or one organization to think that clinicians, doctors, nurses, the healthcare community is not part of coming up with solutions for gun violence. Now, so this patient's not, he had a gunshot wound, but not recently, right? So. Tell us about the range of gun trauma you see and what, what the causes are. We have people that are dying every day. It's not just the, you know, mass shootings that are less than 2% of the entire epidemic we're facing. There's unintentional injuries where children are being killed because of either a weapon that hasn't been stored appropriately. The, the majority of farm injuries are from suicides. One third are from homicides, but there's also uh, domestic uh, violence. We're seeing the full spectrum of where there's tissue that's pulverized, uh, where there are flesh wounds, where people are bleeding to death in front of our eyes. Medical technology is great, but the solution is really prevention. And so I think, you know, we owe it to Americans to really think beyond the operating room to really implement some common sense change. It's pretty easy to know how many people die from gun violence every year or from suicide or from any kind of firearm injury because frankly, it's not that hard to count up bodies. It's, we can look at death certificates and we know and, and we can inform data about deaths, but there's really no way to capture who is being injured and survives. So you're saying that we don't really know how many people are shot every day? No, no, we don't have an accurate number for that. In the absence of the federal government providing a robust mechanism to fund gun violence research. The state has stepped up in New Jersey and has provided this funding for our gun violence research center. We're going to do a really good job at uh, collecting the data for New Jersey that hasn't previously been sort of brought together or put under one umbrella. Your post, so, so okay, so people that are post call, you guys, thank you very much, good job. Often I think of my own family and what they must have thought and gone through when that trauma surgeon came out to the waiting room to talk to them. And you know, sometimes I'll sit there and uh, I'll just kind of look at them through the window before 
I go talk to them. And it's partly, you know, trying to gain my, you know, um, composure to be able to tell them that their loved one is never coming home. Sometimes the, the memory of those faces are chiseled into my mind. Uh, it's, just, it's just devastating. This is not a democratic problem. This is not a Republican problem. This is a uniquely American problem. And I think that we have to you know, put partisan politics aside and simply do the right thing, which is passing common sense legislation. The biggest impact that I have personally seen is the thousands of people that have actually stood up and said, you know what, enough is enough. We, we want to be part of the solution. That's been, that's been the biggest thing because before people talked about it, but now people are saying, no, enough, enough talk. What can we do to be part of this and to really make a difference?